Hi, welcome back to our CHM YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for joining us here each and every week. We are so grateful, so honored, um, so humbled that you join us each and every week and we do not take it for granted. So we want you to know that we do appreciate that. We thank you for that. Now, if this is your first time, then we say welcome. Welcome to our CHM YouTube channel. And we believe that you have been divinely led by God and there will be something in this video for you each day. This is one of the platforms that the Lord has given us for Cynthia Horton Ministries. Um, it's also called Wednesday's Word, where we come each week with a word from God for you that will be a word of encouragement, a word of strength, maybe a word of uh, instruction. Whatever the Lord gives us by the Holy Spirit to share with you, we are more than glad and grateful to do so. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Oh, before I do, I want to ask you all, please make sure that you like comment and share. Please make sure you share these videos. Um, if it's a blessing and an encouragement to you, then we believe it will also be a blessing and an encouragement to someone that you know. So make sure that you like, comment, and share. And go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well, okay? And before we get started into our word, I want to remind you all that we're coming up really quickly, actually. We're just a few days away, 10 days away, actually, from our next Worship and Word gathering, which will be on November the 11th. Uh, we're actually recording this on November 1st. So uh, in 10 days, we will have our uh, last Worship and Word gathering for the year of 2022. We'll be back in 2023, but this will be the last one for this year. So we want to invite you all to come out and join us. If you heard about it, thought about it, uh, if you never heard about it or even knew to think about it, uh, we want to invite you to come. It's an opportunity where we come together to worship the Lord and the beauty of his holiness. We come together to worship the Lord for, um, the, for who he is. And in his presence, we give the word of God and the Lord ministers to our heart. And so we want to invite you to come and join us. Again, that's on um, November the 11th, 11, 11, 7 o'clock p.m. at City Church Memphis, 8200 Macon Road. So make sure you come out and join us for that as well. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get into our word. Uh, we probably won't be long. I kind of chuckle every time I say that because although I have few notes here, they're actually more that God, once I begin to share this, more that the Holy Spirit begins to share through me, but we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, for the last few weeks, we've been talking about the glory of God. We've been talking about uh, what the glory is. As we said, it's the full measure or the full weight or the essence of a thing. And we've talked about how God has hidden glory on the inside of us. He's hidden glory in us. And there are times where he comes to make a demand on that glory, if you will. Uh, we talked about a couple of weeks ago how uh, in order to get that glory out, sometimes it takes us going through hard, challenging times, going through pressure times and times of heats and trials. Um, I think even last week we talked about the importance of us as we're going through those hard times to make sure that we are humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of God. We don't want to be pushing against God. If he has taken us through a trial, he has a purpose for it. So we want to make sure that we yield and submit our will to the will and under the hand of Almighty God because the end result of all that he takes us through is going to be glory. And so we talked about that last week. And today we're going to kind of continue in that vein a little bit, but what the Lord did, he took me back to the scripture that we ended on last week. And we ended on um, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 10 and 11. Uh, and it's re I'm reading it from the Passion Translation. And it says, And then... After your brief suffering, the God of all loving grace, who has called you to share in his eternal glory in Christ, will himself personally and powerfully restore you and make you stronger than you were before. And we said, as we've talked about many times, that restoration that is talking about is the biblical restoration. And the biblical restoration, as you know, we've talked about, is not just uh, putting you back in the place you were in, but it's giving you back everything that was lost, giving you back everything that's been stolen. For all that you've been through, God puts, gives you that and then some. There's always more, an icing on the cake, a cherry on top. There's always more that God gives you so that he's not just putting you back where you were, but he's putting you back where you would have been had you not gone through whatever trial or problem or sickness that you've been through. 
So when it says he's going to restore us, it's not some small thing, but it really is something great and something glorious. And so it said that he will restore us and he will make us stronger than we have ever been. And you know, sometimes we go through these things and we heard that, you know, what don't kill you makes you stronger. But we usually don't want to hear that when we're going through something that we feel like is going to kill us. But that, that's really true. It makes us stronger. So he makes us stronger than we've ever been before. And it says that he will set you firmly in place or establish you and build you up like never before. So when, he, when we go through these things, there's a purpose for it. And what the Lord was saying to me today is that he wanted me to remind you all, yes, we need to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And as we're going through these trying times, keep in mind that there's a purpose for it. And he said to me, let them know or rather remind them that there will be glory after this. There will be glory, the hidden glory that's in us. We may not even know or understand what God has in us, but he's taking us through some situations and circumstances that are hard and challenging and difficult. And, and that's putting it mildly, but God has a purpose to that. Now he's not taking us through it. The enemy is taking, he's doing some things, but God is allowing us to go through those things. You know, similar to what he allowed Job to go through. Because he knew that after Job went through his trying times, that he already had a plan to restore Job to Job double, to give him back twice everything that he had lost. And I just want to encourage you, you don't know what God is going to give back. We, we know he's going to give back at minimum double. But there's a scripture that says that in, in Proverbs 631, when the thief is found, he's made to pay back even up to seven times what he's taken from you. And so as we're going through these times, God wants us to be encouraged that there will be glory after this. When we read through those scriptures in 1 Peter chapter 5, where he talks about him being the God of all grace, this alone, no one realizes that he's the God of all grace, should really give us comfort and maybe even a sense of encouragement because he don't deal with us according to our sin because he deals with us according to grace, according to his mercy and his loving kindness. So as we're going through these things, he's not taking us through punishment because of something we did because he's given us his grace. But he's taking us through something and through his loving kindness, he continued to help us through the problem. In Psalm 103, it talks about Psalm 103 verse 10. It says that God has not dealt with us after our sin and nor does he reward us according to our iniquities so no matter how fiery our testing and trial might be we can always be encouraged as we're going through this that there will be glory after this and we know that god the god of all grace is in this with us he lavished grace on us he lavished mercy on us and even in the midst of this not just going through it but seek god in it god where are you in this and that's kind of my mindset sometimes. God, I'm in this, and I know if I'm in it, you're in it with me. So allow me to find your presence while I'm in this place, going through this fiery trial, because you're a God of grace and not and not necessarily punishment. And so we can take we can take comfort in that, even as we're going through our trying times, remembering that He's the God of all grace. And not only remembering that He's the God of all grace, it goes on to say that He called us into his eternal glory he's the god of all grace he's the strength we need he's the ability we need to withstand the times and the testing that we're going through that's what grace is his strength made perfect in our weakness so when we're going through these times we have that grace we know he's the god of all grace but he also has called us into his eternal glory and so i realized when we're going through these times hear me uh, you all i promise you i realize when we're in the midst of these trying times and these tested, testings and fiery and the suffering that we're going through, we're convinced that we'll never get out of it. We're convinced that there's nothing glorious about it. But what Peter is reminding us here in this passage of scriptures is that our trials are these slight and brief momentary or temporary suffering. So in that is the, is the, the understanding that it's temporary and it won't last always. There's going to be an after because he said after your brief suffering, after these momentary times of struggle and pain that you're going through. So we can look at it and know there is going to be an end to it. 
And after the end to it, we're going to experience the glory that God has hidden on the inside of us. And it's not just for us. It's for those around us who's going to be blessed by the revelation of that glory. But we go through these trial times and these difficulties, but we can know that there's a limit to it. It won't last forever. It made me think about that song that says, I'm so glad trouble don't last always. It don't. It comes to pass. And so will this fiery trial that you're going through. But when we go through it, it makes for us, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and verse 17, it says, our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us glory that vastly outweighs the trouble that we're going through. Because the glory that it is bringing about in us is not temporary. The glory that it's bringing about in us is eternal. It's everlasting. It's glory that we'll be rewarded for in heaven. And so when we're going through these times, we can know he's the God of all grace. And he pours out grace. He gives us his strength and his ability to go through our testing. And he also calls us into his eternal glory. And because he's called us into it, then he has an end to it as well. It's brief. It's momentary. And when we get to this after this, there will be glory. And we get rewarded for it now while we're in this present life, but also in the lifetime that is to come. So I want to end with this verse. I told you it wasn't going to be long. Uh, in Romans chapter 5, verse 3 through 4, and this is um, the Apostle Paul talking to the Romans, but also talking about the trouble that we go through. And he says in verse 3 and 4 that even in times of trouble, we should have a joyful confidence knowing that our pressures will develop in us patience and patience will develop in us endurance and refine our character, and our proven character then leads us back to hope. I'm going to read that again. Even in our times of trouble, we should have a joyful confidence, knowing that the pressure and the trial that we're going through, it is developing, maturing in us, perseverance or patience. And when patience is developed in us, it brings about endurance and long-suffering, meaning we're able to put up with stuff for more than 3.5 seconds. We're able to endure some things. And when that we go through that patient endurance, it refines our character. Now, let's be honest. We all know our character can use some refining. We all know that there is a presence of God hidden in us, but he's got to do as we said last week. He's got to move back some of those things that are shrouding the glory and darkness. And so our character is being refined because our, our glory, our, our end is really that we be conformed into the image of Jesus Christ. And so there are things in our characters, in our soul, that is uh, marring, if you will, the image of God, of Christ on the inside of us. So we go through these things because they are helping to develop our character, which will show forth the glory of God that's on the inside of us. And it goes on to say then that our proven character leads us back to hope. And we know, as we've said many times before, that hope is a confident expectation that there's something good coming our way. We may not know when, we don't always know how, but we can be confident that it will happen because God is faithful. And we can know beyond any shadow of a doubt, whatever testing, trial, difficulty we may be in, there will be glory after this. Amen. Let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we just honor you, God, for who you are. Father, we thank you that you are the God of all grace. Not some, not a little, but all grace. And Lord, your word says you've given us that grace. Your grace is all that we need because it's your strength made perfect in our weakness. And even as the Apostle Paul said, we have to learn to glory in our weakness, glory in our trials, knowing that your presence rests upon us. And so, God, today we thank you. We choose by faith to thank you whatever, for whatever trial and difficulty we are in, knowing that you've given us your grace so we will get through it, knowing, God, that it will come to pass. It has a set time. It is momentary. It is brief, and it is fleeting, especially when it is compared to the glory that will be revealed in us and through us and conferred upon us. Father, today I speak strength. 
I speak peace, I speak grace, and I speak favor, God, upon your people, God, that they will get through this time, that their character will be refined, and the glory that is hidden on the inside of us all will be revealed, and the glory is to the greatness of your name, God, and yours alone. Father, we honor you, and we ask this all in Jesus' matchless and mighty name we pray. Amen, amen. Listen, guys, I love you. I encourage you. I pray God's grace and strength to you. We'll see you back here next week. Shalom.